bullets. Based on the firearms report completed May 22nd, 2015, the gun, item 1A, fired six cartridge casings and six bullets. Item 2 is a cartridge casing found at the corner of the east edge of the carpet near the recliner. Item 3 is a cartridge casing found on the east side of the living room hardwood floor next to a short wooden stool. Item 9 is a cartridge casing found on the south side of the living room carpet. Item 30 is a cartridge casing found on the living room hardwood floor closest to the south wall. Item 36 is a cartridge casing found inches from David's left hand on the south end of the living room carpet. Item 37 is a cartridge casing found on the west side of the living room carpet next to the couch. The spent cartridges found on the west side of the living room carpet on January 17, 2015 are labeled as item 42, item 43, and item 44. All three spent cartridges were found close to the living room couch with hair on them. Test results for all three items showed a single source DNA profile matching Kamel while excluding Rania and David as possible contributors. Item 42 weighed 167.96 grams, contained a blood-like and hair-like substance with expanded damage to the nose of the spent cartridge. Item 43 weighed 179.56 grams and also had a blood-like substance but no hair. The nose of the spent cartridge was damaged and partially exposed. A blood-like substance was also observed on item 44. This spent cartridge weighed 130.24 grams with its nose listed as damaged. Item 45 is a spent cartridge found in the south wall of the basement. This spent cartridge weighed 173.90 grams. The nose was listed as damaged and partially expanded. Holes were observed in both the area rug and the wood floor underneath the rug, Joe Cooksley reported. Chemical testing of the hole in the wood floor also failed to detect the presence of lead. This bullet traveled into the living room carpet, pierced through the hardwood floor, leaving behind bullet fragments, and then lodged itself into the south wall of the basement. A section of the drywall around the lodge bullet was cut in order to retrieve item 45. When the styrofoam behind the drywall was removed, a bullet was observed, according to Joe Cooksley. A DNA profile was not found on item 45. Additionally, Joe Cooksley discussed running trajectory tests on the spent cartridge with BCA specialist Chris Olson. He didn't feel it was necessary, Cooksley wrote in his notes. It should be noted here that two spent cartridges labeled as item 53 and 57 were found by accident on two separate occasions, days and weeks after the bodies were removed from the house. The others. Item 31 is labeled as a bullet fragment found near the south edge of the living room carpet. Item 7 is the unspent round compressed into the living room carpet. Several thin hairs covered the live round. Strands of hair and pieces of flesh were found close to this bullet. DNA tests were never performed on item 7. According to BCA forensic scientist Rebecca L. Dien, BCA crime scene team Joe Cooksley indicated that analysis is not needed on item 7. Once the processing of the crime scene was completed between January 17th and 18th, investigators left the house with four spent cartridges instead of six. Of the four bullets recovered from the scene, only three had blood on them, only Kamel's blood. Authorities missed two bullets when they left the house on January 18th. Those two bullets will be covered in detail. On January 20, 2015, Biotech Emergency Services, the company hired to clean the crime scene, was in the process of removing items from the residence when a mushroom bullet, item 53, rolled out of the living room carpet. This spent cartridge has some white material on the surface, weighed 169.54 grams, 
and was found with an expanded nose. It should be noted, according to Detective Bone, that the bullet was predominantly flat on the back and was sitting on the front mushroom portion of the bullet. The bullet appeared to be mostly intact at the time of our discovering it. Item 53-1 is a swabbing of item 53. Hairs found on the bullet were labeled as item 53-2. This bullet contained a blood mixture of two or more individuals with the major DNA profile matching Rania. Interestingly, David and Kamel were excluded from being contributors to the newly found bullet. Based on those results, authorities should have been looking for a second DNA profile. Unlike some other results, it is not stated that 99% of the general population can be excluded from contributing to the blood mixture of item 53. Since authorities did not discover the spin around on their own, we will never know where item 53 landed after allegedly killing Rania Crowley. What we know for sure is that item 53 rolled out of the living room carpet on January 20th, 2015. What we still need to know is the source of the missing DNA profile or profiles associated with this bullet. Item 57. On February 17, 2015, investigators were notified about a bullet hole in the living room ceiling. Based on that information, authorities returned to the Crowley residence on February 18th and found a bullet, item 57, in the attic above the living room. The bullet weighed 180.18 grams and is the heaviest of all six spent rounds. Like item 45 and item 53, white material was also observed on this spent cartridge. The nose of the bullet was partially expanded. Characteristics of the whole, BCA crime scene lead Joe Cooksley wrote in his report, and its surrounding area indicated that a projectile was traveling generally west to east as it entered the ceiling and exited in the attic. After examining the bullet in the living room ceiling, Authorities found item 57 in the attic above the living room near the front door. There was no blood on this bullet, but the nuclear DNA profile matched David Crowley. The DNA profile did not match Kamel or Rania. An email exchange between BCA analyst Catherine Roach and Detective Tommy Booth stated that no one had been charged with committing a double murder-suicide. Good morning, Catherine, Detective Booth wrote on February 17, 2015, at 8.04 a.m. Nobody has been charged in this case, so I am giving you permission to use up some evidence in its entirety for DNA analysis. If you need anything else, please feel free to contact me. Thanks for all your hard work. Attempting to connect item 57 to the alleged murder weapon, authorities compared the bullet recovered to a bullet fragment found in the living room labeled as item 31. Originally, the bullet fragment labeled item 31 was not included in the firearms examinations. I spoke with Joe Cooksley, BC analyst Lisa Kinsella wrote on April 14, 2015 at 1014 AM regarding item 31 labeled as bullet fragment or fragments. It isn't included in the FA assignment. We discussed that I will add item 31 to the FA assignment to document it and examine it for suitability comparative exams. The bullet fragment labeled item 31 weighed 19.14 grams. The fragment was noted to have a hair-like substance and a torn jacket. The fragment was compared to items 42, 44, 45, 53, and 57, but not to item 43. According to the BCA firearms report, item 57 against item 31 showed the presence of matching features. This means item 1 fired item 31. I'm not sure how that connects item 57 to the gun, but you can look at the laboratory results here. Since item 57 against item 31 showed the presence of matching features, this means that item 1 fired item 31.